wait. You have a TV? No. I just like to read the TV guide. Read the TV guide. You don't need a TV. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 475 of TV Guidance Counselor, year eight. Uh, yet to miss a week, hopefully I don't jinx myself. Um, I know that numerically this is episode 475. I think that in in practice, this is episode 510 or 511, there's a bunch of it in number. But anyway, still a notable number and a supersized episode. My guests this week, plural, are a married couple, Rachel Rosenthal and Sam DeRost. Uh, Rachel is someone I've known for years and years and years since she started doing improv here at Improv Boston and then moved back to New York. Uh, we did Mortified together a ton of times and and known her for years, decades, actually, I think, uh, incredibly funny and talented Sam. I e met for the first time here, <laughs> um, in this chat and also side note, um, this is totally off topic, but, uh, I was watching an interview with Ricky Lake and she was talking about working with divine and the movie hairspray and how divine really loved that Ricky Lake was a bigger gal, uh, like divine was and would constantly encourage her to go and just binge eat. And she goes, uh, let's go have a roast was constantly saying that they should go eat a roast. Um, so that's what I thought of when Sam to roast, uh, sorry, Sam. Uh, although, you know, you're in good company in my brain. Anyway, the two of them co-host a new podcast called the Generation Gap Podcast because Sam is 12 years Rachel's junior, which I am not speaking out of school here. She <laughs> freely admits that that is the premise of their podcast. In fact, uh, it's very funny. Rachel uh, reached out to me saying, you know, I think you would like this podcast, Ken. And I said, not only do I like it, but you guys should come on my show and be guests because I think my listeners would like it. And I know you will. And I know you'll like this episode. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's episode of TV Guidance Counselor with my guests, Rachel Rosenthal and Sam DeRost. TV is my friend and it has been always there for me. Rachel Rosenthal and Sam DeRose, married, separate names, <laughs> one life. These are all one lyrics heart. to like some duet song from AM Gold in the 70s. <laughs> um, but thank you guys. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Man, this is so fun. And so I asked you guys to do this because, uh, Rachel, you guys just started doing a podcast. We are talking about this before because there's an age difference between the two of you. Mm -hmm. That is true. We've got a 12-year age gap. And so we figured there's no better way to kind of explore those icky years uh, than publicly in front of all for all to hear. Because mm -hmm. there's stuff that Sam knows that you don't. And vice versa. Oh, very much vice versa. Yeah, I, I, I think there's a lot of things that Rachel was alive for. She just had no interest in while <laughs> it was being marketed to towards my generation. Yeah, because I'm see. the older one. Mm -hmm. And I also feel like there's also just stuff that's like so odd to talk about. You know, like if we talk about something that happened like September 11th, for example, like start I right was, off with the fun. You stuff. You know, let's wow. just get in. No, but it was like I was a full grown adult. Like I was living in Boston. I had graduated college. And Sam, how old were you at that time? I was uh, in fifth grade. You know, you know, so our class had to be like told like this is serious. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that is that's a little crazy because I think Rachel and I are probably the same age, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm I'm not married to Sam, but the 12 years <laughs> is still a little bit weird because yeah, I was an adult as well. I was working at WFNX at a radio station, yeah, and had to cover it the day that happened. So, um, oh very gosh. very strange. So you were uh, in fifth grade there in Portland at that time. Yeah, I actually was in a small town in Oregon called Cottage Grove, Oregon. And let me tell you, we thought we were next. Yeah. Oh, everybody yeah. did. Yeah, I, everyone did. I first started doing stand-up right after 9-11. Like, I think the second or third time I did it in, in Boston was like, it was like weeks after. And I remember I used to have a bit about that, how like... Every, everyone's like, we're going to be next. We're going to be next. And I was like, they're not going to, I don't think the next thing is like the Hannaford's in Portland, Maine or whatever it was. <laughs> right. And right. Uh, no one ever thought it was funny, but, uh, <laughs> but I did it anyway. Hey, you uh, gotta uh, do yep, it. Yep. Hey, Nick's comedy stop loves that nine 11 humor. Um, <laughs> So, but I bring this up because the issue that you picked was sort of a, a, a happy, 
compromise, I guess we'd say. Right, mm-hmm. right. And then it's sort of right in between. So people usually end up picking between ages like 10 and or 8 and 12 is sort of the sweet spot. Um, but we went to 2002, <laughs> which you'd be like early 20s and you'd be like 12 years old, right? I, uh, 2002, yeah, I would have been uh, 11 years old. Okay. So, <laughs> so we're not going to talk about you guys then dating in any way because it's gross right. totally but gross, yeah. uh, different places of your life but this is what we, we did june 1st to the 7th or 9th uh 2002 it's ashley judd on the cover uh this is a weird year for me too because i w- this was like kind of when i i like dipped out of tv a little bit and i was living in the uk uh an american idol had just started which again is another reason why i think you wanted to pick it right mm-hmm. i just like th- yeah i just kind of for some reason remembered american idol about this time but then of course looking at the tv guide it seems like it wasn't quite on yet it was like about to launch or like this was the first season or yeah it was just starting it was a summer series so they were starting in like mid-june so i picked this because it's on the cover it says Mm -hmm. inside american idol the coolest talent search ever which i would Mm -hmm. i think is debatable (laughs) Uh, i think we all watched we all watched star search for a number of years and and we can say with some authority that that was pretty cool i mean geechee guy they're not going to put him on American Idol, but he did win the comedy award on uh, and no spokesmodels on American Idol. Um, <laughs> but I had lived in the UK the year before and they had pop stars, which was mm-hmm. the first sort of iteration of this where they put together a group um, who I think was called Steps. Uh, and I remember they had their own uh, like Chef Boyardee pasta shapes when I went there. Wow. And then they did a show called Pop Idol, which was what they made into American Idol. So I had seen Pop Idol and I had no idea they were bringing it to America and it's the same exact show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right down to the judges. Um, <laughs> That's what we do here in America. We're like, oh, you guys have The Office? Cool, we'll do that too. <laughs> it was weird that like, the, I feel like all the contestants on the British one were like, you kind of felt sad for him. They were like, he's got a stutter. and oh, he's got a problem. Oh, they're mm-hmm. oh, isn't it nice. And then America was like, all these kids are assholes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it looked so great. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I haven't watched American Idol in a minute, but actually, that's a lie. I watched some of it this year because a friend of mine was auditioning, but I hadn't watched it in a long time. And I do feel like, yeah, a lot of it is the stories of, they do love a good story of like, well, this oh, yeah. person lives in a shack on a dirt road and they came to the audition via Yak or whatever. Via Yak, which is an app. <laughs> uh, that we all know. Uh, fun fact about the Broadway musical Cats, all those outfits made out of yak hair. Is That's that right. true? That is true. Oh, uh, more all, theater talk to come. Theater, all made out of yak hair. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's... I just... For some reason, I just couldn't get behind the stories because I was so cynical by that point, already knowing that they're all bullshit anyway. And I, I think you've probably been approached for reality TV shows at some point. I feel like yeah. everyone in America who does any sort of um, performing mm-hmm. art has at one point. But yeah. it's all completely made up. Like, I remember when um, it was one of the seasons of Last Comic Standing, they like kept asking me to audition and i was like i really don't i'm mm." and then they were like oh it's different this time blah 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 so i I, it's a whole long thing but i remember the the forms they wanted us to fill out were all just like what makes you mad what kind of people don't you like (laughs) Like, (laughs) it was all like you just want people to argue so they're just not digging yeah they don't even try to hide it they're casting a show they're not right it's not a talent thing um and i think that's what they were with american idol as well I yeah, think. there were the, like yeah, for sure. I remember my my improv team in New York getting approached a, a bunch of times about being on some like reality talent shows and we were always like no cuz we know we're good and the moment we go on TV it won't read and it'll be bad and yeah. No. Yeah, I, and it's and I really don't agree with that like all publicity is good publicity thing. Um and I also don't think Again, this is a cynic in me, and we'll get to the guide in a moment here, but I also don't think anyone who sort of makes it on those shows is it's like the people who you develop as a fan base are like really fleeting, and also they're kind of just going to see someone they saw on TV, and if anything, they probably kind of want to see you suck, so they could be like, yeah, I saw them, they sucked. Right. Yeah, it's a different kind of fan base. They... They're probably interested... Yeah, they're interested in you as a personality versus for your talent. Yeah. 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 
even though it superficially is a talent contest. Because <laughs> so, the first season, was that the year that, was it Ruben Stutter? Did he no, win? No, Kelly Clarkson. Okay. It was a moment like this, Ken. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A moment like this. I don't yeah. know that song. I only heard of her. <laughs> Weirdly, I saw uh, Lady Gaga open for her. Whoa, at, that's weird. <laughs> it was a pre-opening event at the Boston House of Blues when they switched it from Avalon to the House of Blues. And they were trying, they did like a party for everyone who can vote in the Grammys. I guess there's a ton of them in Boston because of like Berkeley, hmm. but none of the Boston people ever vote. <laughs> <laughs> so they were trying to like engage them more. So we, I, I somehow got invited to this thing and it, yeah, it was Kelly Clarkson and Lady Gaga was opening for her. And I was, oh. mo I was mostly blown away because we were sitting very close to Belle Bib DeVoe. <gasps> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was very exciting. Um, and I don't even think we stayed for Kelly Clarkson. Speaking of Belle Biv DeVoe, when, before uh, Sam and I started a podcast, we did this Generation Gap show as a live show. And one of the topics, one one of the one of the shows we'll, we'll eventually do it on the podcast as well was sam covered pop punk and taught me about pop punk and i did abc bbd the east coast family nice. <laughs> so i did nice. Bev defoe boys to men another bad creation yeah so you're you're a pop punk kid oh yeah yeah i mean that's what i taught myself guitar on i have since moved on but there is a <laughs> soft very bad part of my heart that still kind of likes it so what what year are we talking are we talking like when you were before your so it seemed really old like 90s pop punk like fat records no effects kind of stuff or like lookout records i uh, yeah i definitely liked a lot of, like i mean I, I i was pretty basic i got all my stuff from mtv and stuff so i i, I was big into like blink and some 41 if they had a number in their name i was a part of it all, all the early green day stuff and yeah, I saw no effects. I went to like Warp Tour and stuff. That was that was my life for a period of time. Now I'm more into musical theater. <laughs> <laughs> that is the natural progression yeah, I and think so. the Venn diagram of white kids who like hip hop and uh, <laughs> uh, early 30s people who used to like pop punk always. <laughs> Always overlaps in musical theater. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And that's why we got married yeah. there. Yeah. 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 Uh, my God. Well, uh, your your episode a couple weeks ago, we just had uh, one of the guys from Less Than Jake on. Oh, so wow. Very cool. Uh, Rachel, Vinny, who's that? He <laughs> is uh, right under Jake and right over that's right. Joe. Yeah. They did open for Bon Jovi for a whole tour. Oh, um, that's good. So, yeah, someone uh, I don't. Like no Kelly about. Clarkson, but <laughs> no, it's not Kelly Clarkson. She has a talk show at that she one. She does now. Yeah. Okay. Um, and does Robert Wu work on that show? I, I don't know. Does. I re does he? I remember he was writing for the show with Amy Poehler and Nick Offerman. For oh, the, yeah. Yeah. No, Is it's it? like that though. It's, it's not it, nailed it. Like, yeah, it's, it's like, like a crafting it. show. Yeah, um, I thought he was working on the Kelly Clarkson show. I I listen to Sirius Satellite a lot. No, I'm not getting a plug here. But they put in their own ads, and they only have like three ads. So <laughs> at the holidays, there was one for the Kelly Clarkson show, and it drove me insane because she was like, "Happy holidays, y'all!" <laughs> and it just I, that like just I would wake up in the middle of the night with that just flipping in my head happy holidays y'all and now you know she has a talk show so the advertising yeah. worked yeah i guess it did uh <laughs> so so she stopped singing and started talking i think she still sings right yeah just in between the talking also know. everybody's doing some kind of talking in quarantine <laughs> like every celebrity started a podcast including us in yeah, quarantine um so who knows i don't know how long kelly clarkson i think she's had a show for a while but yeah yeah, I. It, w that's the movie from Justin to Kelly. That's her, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Never seen it, but I remember the poster. <laughs> and was that all American Idol kids? Justin is was the runner up to Kelly Clarkson, mm -hmm. and then okay. put them in a movie. And it's like a beach party movie. I yeah, think so. I I feel like I watched part of it. I mean, it was obviously a. a 
terrible movie. Um, but yeah, I mean, they I think they were just kind of like, what else can we milk out of the popularity of the show? Because they both were like pretty popular. And she's, I have to speak up for Kelly Clarkson, very talented. I think she's a great singer. Um, and I like a lot of her music. But yeah, that was insane. An insane time. And because then you also had like Clay Aiken. Oh, Clay Aiken. Yes. And Ruben Stuttered. They Ruben's, were like the, yeah. oh man. They were all in the same season? No, I think Clay and Ruben Sutter are a season or two later. Mm-hmm. They were the Justin and Kelly of their season. <laughs> oh, so they so then Rick so Rick not Rick Ruben Ruben Sutter and uh, Clay Aiken they had a movie where they were a couple at a beach party. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Because yeah. that I remember seeing, yeah. and it was uh, called oh, from over. Clay to Ruben. That's yeah. right, right. It was called the Clay <laughs> Ruben. William Hung made an appearance. In that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh God! When I first started doing stand up. There was a guy who his whole act was a William Hung impression. Wow. And he put like a like a stocking on his head, so like his eye oh, well, the, oh my god. Whoa. I was yeah. gonna make a whoa, I can't even comment yeah. on that. Yeah, <laughs> this was this was in Rhode Island. Uh, <laughs> You're on the all right, so, so I'm sort of familiar with this era then. Uh and th- this is also when Britney Spears was in that movie about singing. Right. Ooh, crossroads. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. We did uh, have a Pop Princesses episode, so that works. All right. Crossroads is not uh about Britney Spears singing as much as you want it to be. There's yeah. a lot a lot of like abuse and um <laughs> yeah. pregnancy problems in that movie mm-hmm. that but really that's, Yeah. That's the singing of sex. <laughs> there it is. That's true. You heard it here. It's what so, happens when the music stops, Ken. That's right. And starts getting real. Uh <laughs> Yeah, and then there was also Raise Your Voice. Is that Hillary Duff, I think, right? Ooh, I don't know. That's don't that's know that your one. generation, babe. Yeah. I thought Hillary Duff was just um uh, Lizzie McGuire. I didn't know if she came from a talent show or not. No, I, I yeah, maybe she was just Lizzie McGuire. Uh so for people who haven't tuned up by now, let's jump into the guy that's playing of things Ken doesn't know. Uh I, I just I what I sound like is somebody's dad stuck talking to his uh his daughter's boyfriend's friends at like a cookout. <laughs> it's yeah. funny though, because to me you are an encyclopedia of knowledge. <laughs> like I think it's look, th- your listeners are just getting to hear one other side of you because normally I feel like you're like, oh, that show that was written by this person in this year <laughs> and it was about this. And I'm yeah. like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, this is a this is a this is a blind spot for me. Um, <laughs> but thankfully this issue of TV guide is a nice mixture of old people stuff and new stuff. Cause what the before we get to the listings, right away what I was drawn to on page four there. Really cool photo of John Tesh. Like yeah. John Tesh dressed like he's a Navy SEAL uh, who will go out and like like murder for hire John Tesh. And uh, mm-hmm. it's about how he wrote the theme to NBA basketball in NBC. Whoa, that's oh. so odd. And then they ask him if he could beat up Shaq. And that's one answer? of the questions. He says, uh, laughs. I come up to Shaq's midsection. At my age, I give it a lot of thought before I approach that basket. Yikes. Both ankles taped. You know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> God. Wow. Yeah. I don't even know. I, by, say, by saying you know what I mean after, maybe this is just me that makes it sound weirdly sexual. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, you both, never... Both ankles You taped. know what I mean, something that's not sexual. <laughs> no. You know what I Can mean? Can you hand me that hammer? You know what I mean? Nope. <laughs> uh, I come up to Shaq's navel. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do want to point out uh, on this page, there's also this crystal light ad uh, mm-hmm. for this like pink lemonade thing that my family had just like packets and packets and packets of this specific flavor of crystal light oh yeah my family was always in that like oh the reason we're all overweight is because of like one drink we're drinking so we're going to change that and that's going to change everything (laughs) it never did tickled pink wasn't there a key to weight loss success (laughs) no no Uh. yeah my uh i was talking to my dad the other day he has kidney stones and he Mm -hmm. drinks one one can of diet coke in the morning and no other liquids all day. Oh, no. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's why you're... He's like, I don't think so. Uh, so I think that's a parental generation thing. Yeah. <laughs> just fill that can up with just a little bit of water one day. and Just once. Yeah. You know. This is pre. This is post the Crystal Light I know. And I'm sure, Rachel, you may remember the theme of the Crystal Light jingle prior to this. I can't think of it. How does it go? 
I believe in crystal light because I believe in me. <laughs> oh, that's like the best. I love Which, that. If you stop and think about it for more than a second, it doesn't make any sense. But... <laughs> it just a drink you, f- you can believe in. Yeah. It just gives you f- a good feeling. Yeah. Nice. Feeling. Yeah. I guess, but it's also like, well, if you believe in yourself, then you got to like crystal light. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I, I don't. Okay. <laughs> but they had it for years. Uh, yeah, I they still make Crystal Light, but isn't it like people have little like emergency packets and they make it on their own? Like on That's the what we had, yeah. Mm-hmm. I assumed that's what this was. I didn't realize it came in a bottle form. Oh, yeah, we were... We had it pre-mixed back in the oh, old days. Wow. There was a lot of... Um, I used to really like the powder that made ice... It was an iced tea powder. Nest tea. Nest tea. That was... Yep. Yeah. That yeah. was it. They had a, a classic ad where this woman it was like sweating and it was really slow and she was like in a bathing suit and then she like slowly was falling forward and it looked like there was a beach towel that said nest nesty on it, but then she fell into it and it was a pool. Oh <gasps> fun! I believe yeah. in her and yeah. I believe in nesty. <laughs> yes, I believe in me. Well, don't you believe in you? Well then you have to. Like I get, <laughs> yeah. the more I think about it, it's brilliant. Because otherwise people will be like, No, I don't believe in me and be like, What's wrong with you? Yeah. Why aren't you drinking crystal light? Maybe well, if you drank some crystal light, you could believe Aww. in yeah. yourself. I'm surprised crystal light never suffered from the rise of crystal meth. Mm. Yeah, mm. when people say, Hey, I need some crystal, that was never crystal light. No. No. Yeah. Huh. I don't even. I'm. I'm speechless. Because there's only two things I think when people say crystal. Right. I go light and meth. <laughs> light and meth. Yeah. <laughs> what Sometimes else? Sometimes I it? like my meth light. Also, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Extra heavy, like Waterford. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, that is a great ad. And then there's a, on the next page. There's uh, what I, I'm, I. I know you didn't look like this kid, Sam. <laughs> um, but. This is what I'm gonna. I'm picturing you looked like at this time, listening to pop punk um, in this not, anti-drug ad. Yeah, not too far off. I definitely had the skateboard. Did not have that hat. You did didn't have, have a leather kangle. <laughs> you did have like dyed hair. You like straight had s- weird straight hair. Blonde that sometimes dyed. Yeah, yeah. I definitely experimented with some uh, dyeing my hair different colors. Pink was the worst one. Manic panic, or did you go Kool Aid? I I went as as vibrant as I could go, mm. and it was right. just a big streak right right here that covered my eye. That was cool hair when I was in high school, <laughs> which was a hair that covered one of your eyes. <laughs> yep. We call that the uh, the homegrown eye patch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I remember they had news stories about how they were worried kids were going to have stig- stigmatisms because of that. Yeah. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I think everything's fine. I think it yeah. was okay how the kids wore their hair back then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it didn't, didn't ruin a generation of kids' <laughs> eyesight. Yeah. It was a new version of if you keep doing that, you'll go blind, <laughs> yeah. but much less exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let's dive into the listings here. Now, did you guys pick separately or did you pick together? Totally separate. Separately. Oh, so you don't know. This. Oh, this will be amazing. Hopefully, the marriage is intact uh, after <laughs> yeah. we're done here. <laughs> um, we will see. Also, a commemorative Dale Earnhardt, North Carolina State <laughs> Quarter is uh, being that, advertised yeah. in here. Uh, they don't name the price, so I'm imagining it's got to be probably a billion dollars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's, I oh, remember that is. so much. I remember Dale Earnhardt's death was one of the biggest deals at the time. And that was after 9-11. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dale Earnhardt's death was like very, it was a national tragedy. The first time I heard of Dale Earnhardt was when he died. Same. <laughs> yeah. 100%. Yeah. 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 It's like it made him. Uh, so where are we here? There's so many articles in this. Oh, and this super creepy Shirley Temple doll. All right, hold and on. it's a Shirley Temple doll of Shirley Temple holding a Shirley Temple doll. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> it's on page 57. Uh, it is just a descent into madness is what it is uh because i don't want a doll of a girl holding a doll of herself too bad let alone shirley temple of all people because it is real creepy that is so weird i don't know why we can't find it 
Well, it's well, right we, before the listings. Yeah, well, I'll send it to you, you later. We trust um, you. you. You, if you want to sleep tonight, you probably don't need to see it. <laughs> um, so let's dive in here. Saturday night, eight o'clock. What did we do? Ladies first. Ooh, Saturday at eight. Oh, I'm gonna watch the movie Wall Street. I love that movie. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> because it's a New York set. I don't know why I. I don't know. I wrote down Wall Street movie. I'll watch it all night. Sam would probably watch MLS. That's what I wrote down. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just remember liking that movie, but I haven't seen it recently. So I, I don't know if it holds up. What did you do, Sam? I went uh, I went for a Nickelodeon hour. I watched all that and the Amanda show. <laughs> Amanda Bynes, that show yeah. was pretty good. Uh, you know, she's a tragic character. She was very talented. Yeah. Absolutely. I yeah, I, I was thinking about this because I was like, all that in 2002, I'm like, I can't tell if Keenan is on that show or if he's already on Saturday Night Live at that point. <laughs> I think he's the longest uh, running SNL cast member ever. He yeah, is. I think they should add his all that years on top of it because he was just being groomed for that show since he was a child. And we were we were we we're obsessed with Keenan Thompson. I feel yeah. like we talk about him all the time. <laughs> yeah. You know and what also, happened to him though, right? What? Oh, all his money got stolen. By what agent? His parents? Is he had some business manager. So like oh. every single dime he ever made got stolen. Like all the fat Albert, but like everything pre SNL oh. was just gone. No good burger money, nothing. That's uh, wrong. Yeah. So, he so has now he's hopefully, work. yeah, he had to work all this time. Yeah. Well, he's clearly been working and buying some sort of like secret anti-aging cream because he looks younger and younger every year he looked older when he was younger though like he was like how old was he on all that you'd say 15 yeah, yeah. something like that but he passed for like 25 yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so i think he was just like always that age yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what all that means it's mm -hmm. true mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, if you, believe in, if you believe in all that, <laughs> yeah, I, there's a generation of people and this would be one of those divide things that all that was like the first sketch show they watched. Same. Right? Yep. Me, me, me. And I, I hated it cause I was like 15 and I'm like, this is stupid baby garbage. <laughs> and, uh, and there, but the generation, like maybe five years younger than us, um, are like, it's the greatest sketch show of all time. <laughs> like, they're just like, it's amazing. I uh, feel like that was the show. Yeah. When was that? I was in a I was in a sketch and improv group when I was a kid and I remember I didn't get to audition for all that, but I feel like some of the kids in my troupe got to go into the city and audition for it cuz it was like what we were doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But I didn't get to do it. Some yeah. girl from Melrose where I grew up won a contest and became a cast member on all that. But she was like a little kid. I don't remember what her name was. That's crazy. Uh, I, I could look it up. Yeah, Wall Street, man. <laughs> uh, did you see part two? Uh, no, I don't think so. Wait, was it a remake or was it? It's a sequel. It's from like two years ago. No. Yeah. Should and have I you ever seen? I, I don't know. Have you ever seen Wall Street, Sam? No. It, it's I've just seen about parts of Wolf of Wall Street. I know what parts. Um, <laughs> it, uh, the bottom part. <laughs> but Wall Street's just like, it's like just a movie about assholes I and know. cokeheads. But like a lot of people watched it wrong and are like, love those guys. Yeah. <laughs> like I Fight just, Club sounds Yeah. Like. Yeah. I guess in my head, well, first of all, I think I mix it up in my head with a few movies because it, it's been so long. It's one of the secret of my success. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. And also, um, Michael Douglas is in this movie called The Game, which mm -hmm. I which I really like. I love a I love a, a movie with a like, now what now? You know, a switcheroo. And so I think like in my head, I think that Wall Street, you know, has the switcheroo, which is like, but Maybe not. <laughs> I think I think the Wait, game what's is the big switcheroo that happens in the movie Wall Street. Well, first it's you're like dream. money is awesome, and then you're like <laughs> money's not awesome. Oh, that's not a switcheroo. Yeah. It's basically the same plot as Bright Lights, Big City, Less Than Zero, like that '80s like dude cocaine rule. Oh, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that. 
yeah. But just in different clothes. Um, yeah. yeah, I I would I would recommend the secret of my success instead. Um, and the game is really good. I think that's David Fincher's first movie. I love that movie. Speaking that of Fight great. Club. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really good movie. The um, main thing I remember from Secret to My Success, I think that's the movie that has the song Bom 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 Yes, Yellow, the German band. See, uh, yep. he has this information. That in song is called Oh Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. It should be called Chicka Chicka. Chicka Everybody Chicka. knows. <laughs> yeah, it's like a sexy version of the Friday the 13th theme. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's a really funny scene in that movie where uh, Michael J. Fox gets caught. So the plot of that movie is Michael J. Fox is a... He works in the mailroom and he pretends he's an executive and they just believe him and he's leading this double life. But so he has to like change into his suit in the elevator. Yeah. <laughs> and then somebody, the elevator doors open and he's just like naked, but has a tie on. And <laughs> this old lady's looking at him. So he just starts flexing. And then the door shut. It's like the weirdest. It's very funny. It's almost like um, if we bring our Broadway uh, knowledge in, it's like how to succeed in business without really trying a little bit. Sure. Like a little fake it till you make it. Was Nathan Lane in that? In how to succeed? Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm just going to get I, anything Wait. you talk about Broadway. I'm going to be like, bet Nathan Lane was in that. <laughs> Nathan Lane was not in how to succeed. How, yeah. In the movie. Really? Yeah. He plays Nathan Lane. <laughs> Oh, with Matthew Broderick? <laughs> yeah, with Matthew Broderick. Oh, my goodness. Isn't he? I haven't seen the movie. I uh, didn't know there was I'm movie. 95% sure. Is it fair to say that Nathan Lane and Matthew Broderick are in every single Broadway production made between 1985 and today? <laughs> we'll I, give I, this to you. Yeah, babe. I've been thinking about this a lot lately because I don't think that Matthew Broderick is that good of a theatrical actor. He's so subdued, mm -hmm. right? It's too, he, too subtle. Yeah, but him being paired with Nathan Lane, they make each other better because uh, Matthew Broderick looks a little bit more lively if he's got some Nathan Lane energy, in, you know, in 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 him. Um, and then Nathan Lane just looks funnier and better <laughs> next to Matthew Broderick. If someone's a little more downbeat, <laughs> yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, um, yeah I uh, I don't I've never seen a show on Broadway. Oh, <gasps> Ken! I just never had the interest. I've seen shows in the West End. But I wasn't oh, okay. that excited. Oh. You, you only go to London for your shows. Just for the shows. <laughs> Just for the shows. I saw Cat on a Hot Tin Roof starring Brendan Fraser. <laughs> what? Wow. <laughs> yeah. My first Broadway musical I ever saw was Spider Man Turn Off the Dark. Because you're 11 years old. <laughs> <laughs> it was the first time I went to New York City. I had the choice between Once and Spider Man Turn Off the Dark. And I went. Mm, no one's gonna break their leg in Once. <laughs> I don't even know Once. Yeah, it's like a you know, there's a bunch of actor musicians and they're playing stuff. Uh, there's a movie of it. That's really the reason. The movie go to see became it. the mu the yeah. movie was first, and then it is became it, a musical. So is it like funny. Rent meets the Monkeys? Mm -mm. Totally. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> no. Fiddler on the Roof meets uh, Elvis Presley. <laughs> Once Have you... is like a very like it's like an indie right like it's Irish all like folky folk. yeah. Yeah. Oh, so it's like Dropkick Murphys. <laughs> there sure, you go. There, there you is. go. We have to translate this into Boston for Ken. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I I have a bunch of tapes uh, or DVD rips of various productions of Carrie the Musical. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> which wow. is real bad, but in a fascinating way. Uh, <laughs> but that's about where, where my... Uh, <laughs> my Broadway knowledge starts and ends. Uh, well, they only give Wall Street three stars and the big chills on at the same time, and that gets four stars, so... Just oh, saying. interesting. Mm -hmm. I was I was looking. I almost went with Jurassic Park three. <laughs> I saw that too. Yeah, I like that one. I've never seen two. I've only seen one in three. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. I don't. I, I we watched two recently, but three I have not seen in a long time. Because Goldblum comes back in three. I think that was the big thing, right? He wasn't in two, and then comes back in three. If I'm remembering, I thought I think he's the main one in two. I think Goldblum is the main one in two. Hmm. Goldblum plays the girl? Yes, yes. <laughs> the blonde. No, he, he plays the T-Rex. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Have you ever gone to Goldblum's show in, uh, in Los Angeles? No. No. Oh, I didn't know he had one. Oh, my God. I, I don't what know what that? I don't know what the status of it is now with COVID, but uh, like 
every other week on a Wednesday, he had this jazz show, <laughs> this random jazz club, and it, for years, and he would just go in his little place, and Golden just wanders around and like talks absolute nonsense, and then plays piano, and then just like we, sit goes on weird bizarre tangents uh and they did it one year as part of sf sketch fest and it uh rachel my wife rachel went and it was mental like she go she walked in and she's like the lights were up in it i just heard some crazy person talking like while we were like going into the building and it was goldblum just like walking down the line with a microphone talking to people <laughs> so i've never had any interest in being famous but i want to be that kind of famous where i can just like they're like, yeah, yeah, you can have a show. Do whatever, whatever. the fuck you want. <laughs> yeah. And I just get to do that. That sounds great. Oh, yeah. And he'll be like, he's got a whole like jazz band behind him. And he'll be like, hey, look at this hat. Does anyone know where I bought this hat? Anyone? Anyone? And then would just like play a song. <laughs> and then be like, this hat, the hat, anyone guesses? It was just bizarre. We randomly listened to an old, we got a record player recently. And so we were listening to an old Steve Martin stand up album last night. And like, so, you know, he had so many just like kind of really silly non sequiturs. And then he would just play his banjo. And it was yeah. great. And I loved it. It's like a little palate cleanser. It was yeah. great. Yeah. I guess that's very vaudeville, though. I mean, that would be. Yeah kind of how they would get between things um so then what'd you do at night so rich is watching wall street all night because green is good um and then what did sam do at nine i'm i'm turning over to hbo to watch some curb your enthusiasm Mm. which is so weird to me that it was on then because i feel like that's a new show (laughs) right i know yeah i i thought that about a lot of stuff like looking through this like i was like oh these are all shows that i would watch now like these are on now feet under (laughs) sex in the city curb (laughs) <laughs> and yeah. it's weird it says larry david colon curb your enthusiasm i wonder if that was like an early title it's the pilot is it the pilot yes yes it's the pilot wow. so this must have been the first summer that it started now i'm remembering hbo start this i don't think they do this anymore but their original programming seasons started in june so like Tales from the Crypt, Dream On, like their sort of early shows they did. Uh, there's Oz. They all started in June. So they kicked off Curb Enthusiasm the first year it aired. And I believe that was the first episode is called Larry David Curb Enthusiasm. Oh, man, I'm feeling really good about my choices then. That's a good choice. Yeah. Wow. I I just noticed that. I just realized I may be. Is this Saturday that we're looking at right now? Yeah. Oh, I think I mixed up some stuff because I was like, oh, I would also totally watch The Wedding Planner. <laughs> I don't see The Wedding Planner on there, but I do see CB4 is on, Miss Hip Hop. It's on VH1 at uh, 9 o'clock. Oh, I see. Wait, I don't know what's CB4. It's basically Chris Rock's version of Spinal Tap oh, about a whoa. rap group. Chris Elliott's in it. <gasps> um D's or D's it. It's really good. There were two movies that came out at the same time that were mockumentaries about rap groups. CB4 and one that Rusty Cundiff did called Fear of a Black Hat, which I think is the better one, but they're both really funny. I can't believe I've never seen that. I'm writing it down right now. <laughs> it's really funny. Have you seen CB4, Sam? No, no, never heard oh, of it. Oh, it's really funny. Uh, yeah, it's, go- it's, it's like the first big thing Chris Rock did. It was before the Chris Rock show. But after he had left SNL and in Living Color, it was mm-hmm. like he did this movie. Um, it was great. So that's Saturday night. Not one thing that you've both picked. Uh, no. So no match is there. No match. Uh, no match. No match. No match. So that's uh, that's one. That's one zonk. Uh, Sunday. I don't keep this. Not a game show. I don't, uh, this is the first <laughs> time I've ever zonked anyone. But you guys earned it. Um, <laughs> Sunday night. What'd you do? Let's start. With I Sam feel this like time. we're gonna we're gonna link up here a little bit at eight p.m. I'm watching The Simpsons. What are you watching? What Sunday? Oh, Sunday. Yeah, I'm watching The Simpsons and Malcolm in the Middle. Okay, yeah. okay, we've redeemed it. Uh, uh, marriage is saved. <laughs> <laughs> marriage is saved. I put Simpsons and King of the Hill, and you did Simpsons, Malcolm in the Middle. Yeah, I actually noticed this that it depended on which one of the things you looked at. I think it might have been like local programming or whatever. One of them was Simpsons. King of the Hill, and one of them was Simpsons. Malcolm oh, in the middle. maybe I looked at the wrong time. Yeah, no, 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 no. no. on the no, chart, it was different. Yeah, if you look at the grid, 
Yeah. yeah. It said King of the Hill. And if you look at the listings, it was Malcolm in the Middle at 830. The yeah. listings were correct. The grid is done by a different department <laughs> in a different time frame. So I've learned this about TV Guide because uh, by I think by 2002, they were laying this out on a computer. But prior to that, it was all just like cut and paste, paste up magazine. Yeah. So they had like 18 different departments that did like one thing. And often they would have totally different information because they had different timelines. That's so wow. funny. Cause yeah, when we were first looking at the TV guide, both of us thought that just that primetime grid with the cable channels was it mm -hmm. and, or with the networks. And I then, hadn't, yeah. I should have said this earlier. I've never looked at a TV guide before ever week, before this <laughs> week. No. Not at all. Wow. Oh, yeah, I guess because you either had like a guide on your that you called up. Yeah. Or like, did you ever use the TV guide channel? That thing that scrolled? Yeah, I'd seen that. Yeah, especially at my grandparents' house. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, that was uncalled for, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I, I had to like look several things up on independent sources to make sure my information was correct. <laughs> well, you learned and yeah. that's good. Yeah. Did you guys get TV guide, Rachel? I can't remember. I've definitely seen a TV guide before, but I don't know if we had them in our house or if they were at someone else's house or at the doctor's office. I, I'm not sure. Never at the doctor's office. No. I don't we think I've ever seen it at the doctor's office. That would be cool, though. What, like, I kind of put it at the same in the same era as like National Geographic. Okay. Is that, I don't know why. Like in my head, we got a lot of National Geographics in our home, <laughs> but I don't know if yeah. we got TV Guide. <laughs> I mean, TV Guide was the uh, highest circulation magazine of all time in the world. Um, but National Geographic was also up there. I think it was one of those magazines that like when kids were selling magazine subscriptions for school, mm -hmm. <laughs> it was like one you'd get when you couldn't just get highlights anymore. It's um, funny because I'm, I'm like reading, I'm reading, I'm rereading a book called Antithena air by john krakauer about like the everest tragedy and mm -hmm. i read it actually probably around this time 2002 but the book was written in 97 and takes place in 96 and so much of it like when they're referencing like the rich people who are trying to climb everest they're rich because they own magazines and it's yeah. just so funny because it's just so different from now um I'm like, all these guys would have been broke by now. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Yeah. The older I get, the more I realize that a lot of the things that we thought would were just like permanent staples. Yeah. Were just actually this really small blip in time, like video stores. That was like a 30 year thing. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Uh, you know, or or like the way that we, there's just like a bunch of stuff like that or magazine publishing or any of that stuff. Um, and it, it it's it's obviously you can only know it in hindsight but yeah. um yeah so you're both on fox so this is this is you're you're sticking together you mm -hmm. you both passed up a tnt original movie called king of texas now this is a western <laughs> and here's what shocked me this western stars patrick stewart <laughs> Whoa. The king Patrick, of Western. <laughs> you think Western. You think Patrick Stewart. And so they got him with like a long white beard and he looks like a prospect. Patrick Stewart is powerful in this sleeping, sweeping 2002 made for cable Western adaption. Here's the best part of Shakespeare's King Lear. Oh, that makes sense. Well, that's there it what is. it is. There it is. <laughs> How, this sounds like a Simpsons joke. I have seen many productions of Shakespeare with way worse high concepts than this. Um, that is just a very typical thing. And, What's and, the worst high concept you saw? Um, I don't want to call out somebody in particular. <laughs> All right, it's sleep no more. Fine. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, I just feel like it's always like it I might as well be set on the moon, or it's always like it's always Louisiana. If I'm gonna be honest, like every is that because of Tennessee Williams? They're trying to like make it. Yeah, maybe. I think there's some, like, one person wrote an article one time that's like, well, actually, in Shakespeare's time, they sounded more like what we would think of as, like, a as, as a Southern American now. Like, that's the way people talked. And I think somebody wrote that in an article one time, and then everyone who's interpreted Shakespeare since is like, let's go with that. Everyone with Southern accent. Weird. That's yeah. very incorrect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like some Southern guy wrote that for his dating profile. <laughs> You know, I sound like Shakespeare times. <laughs> That's how the sounded. Uh, yeah. So very weird. Cause it's weird. Anyway, King Lear as King of Texas starring Patrick Stewart. Uh, I'm curious to hear what accent he uses. Yeah. That's my biggest concern here. <laughs> 
Oh boy. <laughs> uh, that has to be a huge bomb. I, I can't imagine. Yeah. Uh, like people would be re-watching that if that was a hit. Well, yeah, that's why I was watching King of the Hill. Because you thought it was King of Texas. <laughs> I would, Maybe I, that's why they put Malcolm in the Middle on, because they didn't want people to get confused. Right. Because King of Texas was on TNT. I will say, like, now that you pointed out that that first grid and the second grid have, like, different information, I'm like, I, for not, well, I don't know if I'm skipping ahead, but for 9 p.m., I'm like, I don't even know if my show is actually on. What'd you pick? Well, I, I said I would watch Alias, but I would flip to the Tonys at the commercials. <laughs> um, so let's see. So the Tonys are on. I do yeah. see them there. I see the Tonys, but maybe um, Alias? I don't see Alias. Yeah, that <laughs> first grid really threw me. Um, I don't see Alias, but uh, I just watched Alias for the first time in the last two months. Wow. I, I, what'd you think? Um, I'm a huge Fringe fan. And there's a lot of like proto fringe stuff in Alias that they did better in Fringe later. So like a lot of it's like demo tapes of a show I liked. <laughs> um, but the cast is very likable. I love Jennifer Garner. She's I love always her. very likable. She's so great. Made her laugh once. Uh, oh uh, really? Just say it. Yep. Uh, no big deal. Uh, that is a big deal. <laughs> What's the story? Does she live in Boston still? She no, not still. Because her and Affleck got divorced because yeah. he cheated on her with a babysitter that looks like her. Um, <laughs> They were living in Boston. They were living um, over by Fresh Pond, and she was always walking the kids around. Yeah. And uh, I was hosting my Thursday show at the Comedy Studio, and it was when they were filming that movie, The Invention of Lying, up in Lowell. Mm -hmm. And the Forbidden Man, Louis C.K., called and asked if he could come down and do a set because some friends of his hadn't seen him do stand-up before. And so I was like, yeah, uh, this is before we knew about uh, the jerking off. And um, <laughs> and so he came down and it was it was like 10 people in the crowd. And the friends who had never seen him do stand-up were Ben Affleck and Jennifer Garner. No. And they, yeah, they were there for the whole show. They basically tipped everyone 100 bucks. They were very nice. Um, and, and yeah, that was Jennifer, Jennifer Garner was there. I used to, at this time in 2002, I worked at the Children's Museum in Boston, and she would bring the kids to the Children's Museum. Oh, never him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah. don't know. <laughs> yeah. um, she's uh, great. I wasn't in Boston, but I was a child at that time. Oh, so that's so how you've I been to a children's museum. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Jennifer Garner babysat you. Yeah, um, yeah it's. It, I really liked Alias, though. It's fun. Uh, it, yeah, it's I silly. watched it a couple years ago. I had never seen it either, and I thought it was really fun. I like that kind of stuff. I think I would have liked it then, but I'm not sure. Uh, you did pass up <laughs> Looking for Love, the Bachelorettes in Alaska. I did. I, I, I saw that. So is that... Well, so that's pre Bachelorette. This is a one off Fox special. <laughs> Uh, and it it says, when it comes to selecting a mate, why is it always up to bachelors? Ladies, now it's your turn. Oh. Tonight, five single ladies travel to a place where men far outnumber women to choose their future husbands from 50 handsome bachelors and make their romantic dreams come true. Looking for love, bachelorettes in Alaska. <laughs> they make 50 sound like a large number, but... When it comes to the people that you might spend the rest of your life with, you know, like you're going to have to meet more than 50 people. Yeah. And it's probably you know? all like it's like fifth. <laughs> find your love among 50 white chiseled <laughs> bankers. Uh, yeah. yeah. And it's less than 52 because there's five women. So that right. gives them they all have like more or less 10 yeah. to right. pick from there. Cat fight. I mean, that's hopefully that's what people are hoping for. <laughs> um, yeah. It that sounds awful just <laughs> awful uh and do you the best thing about it is uh tv got has a little close-up and their headline is nanookie of the north Ooh. oh damn someone's getting Nanookie. promoted yeah yep yeah. uh would you pick them for nine I am watching the Tonys. I'm not watching it during the commercials. I'm going straight for the Tonys. Mm -hmm. Thoroughly Modern Millie wins uh, Best Musical at this Tonys, and that uh, is one of my favorite musicals. Yeah. So this would be a good one to watch. Are you both in agreement that that should have won that year? I think it did. But yeah, what but was it up against? The, oh, the, yeah. Do, I, do you I, think it was a good call? Uh, I do think it was a good call. I don't know what it was up against, but I can't imagine that it was up against one of my other favorite musicals, so I think it deserved to win. <laughs> was uh, B.B. Newworth in that? 
Uh, Sutton Foster. It's not Baby New Earth. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Yeah, yeah. What? This is Lilith from Frasier. I think she was I in Chicago, seen. maybe. Oh, no, no, but you've seen Cheers. I've seen Cheers. She's Lilith. <laughs> she isn't she a big Broadway person? I'm sure. Yeah, I saw her in um, Chicago. I think that's all she was in. That's like more of her thing. Uh, a different type than Sutton Foster, for sure. It's funny. I'm supposed to watch um, Chicago for a musical theater podcast this week. So they have, I'll be oh. familiar Ooh, soon. I'll watch which that one with which you. Chicago are you going to watch? Yeah, the new one. The new the, one. Yeah. Which was like not that new at this point. The John C. Riley one. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. John Barrowman was in one of them. Um, that one is the one with like Renee Zellweger, I feel like. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. See, I know a little bit. So the sum total of my musical theater knowledge is the first hour of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to talk about Nell Carter and Ain't Misbehaving, Ooh, I I'm here for that. that. I love that show. and I, It's I, pretty great. Yeah. It's Nell Carter. I actually She's think great. I saw it live. I think I saw Nell Carter perform. Really? Yeah. I think I, I went with my mom. There's your podcast. This there 52 it is. part podcast right there. <laughs> <laughs> that was the same year that David Bowie starred in The Elephant Man on Broadway. Jeez. So did you go all the way to the West End to see it? <laughs> I did. I swam. Uh, that was pretty good. Yeah. No, I saw some weird plays in the West End. What else did I see? I don't know. There's nothing else really that notable. But the Brendan Fraser cat on a hot tin roof was, was pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, and there was something else with Casey Affleck in it. So I'm it? putting this whole town in my rear oh, view. Yeah, but I'm in London. Uh, so that's your whole Sunday. Let's jump to Monday night. What'd you do? Um, now I'm afraid that I wrote things that aren't like playing because I looked at that first grid. But I put down at 8 p.m. I wrote down that I would watch King of Queens. That is on. But I, there was a bunch of stuff that I was like conflicted about because like I think like King of Queens. A lot of these shows are stuff that like I would watch in syndication, but I never watched then. Mm -hmm. Um, and King of Queens is definitely one of them, but I do feel like back then I'm like, Ooh, I probably would watch like fear factor. And there was one other thing too. Fear factor is a celebrity edition as well with backstreet boy, Kevin Richardson and actor Stephen Baldwin. Oh my. Wow. Uh, Stephen Baldwin is the, is the one with the head injury. Who's into Jesus. I think, right. Is that That, Baldwin that checks? uh, Oh, I don't know. I just know he's like the one that kind of has like more of a squished face. I thought that was Daniel. (laughs) (laughs) So I think that's all of them as they get older. Stephen Baldwin, I think is in usual suspects, right? Okay. No, he's the one in biodome. Oh man. We're Holly Shore. (laughs) Oh, he's not even a Baldwin. (laughs) (laughs) Kylie Minogue's in biodome, which I always forget. Um, So you're watching that. And then what are you watching, Sam? I got a double header again on Nickelodeon. I got SpongeBob SquarePants oh, yeah. next to As Told by Ginger. What's that? As Told by Ginger is almost like a Clarissa Explains It All kind of show where it's like a girl, an animated show about like a girl who's just kind of going through her middle school problems. Um, I remember watching the show and there was like a scene where they were talking about like, oh, you held hands with a boy. Did you uh, hold hands hands cupped? Or fingers laced. Ooh. And that was the first time I saw something on television that was like geared towards me where I'm like, oh no, I'm gonna have to start thinking about this. Because mm. you know? that's that's what fingering is. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I learned how to finger. Was, oh, is that why you do that? Finger. I mean, <laughs> oh boy. Um yeah, I I've seen that show listed. I've never seen the show. Yeah. Uh of course is ripe to be a Broadway musical after the SpongeBob SquarePants one (laughs) as told by Ginger should be the next one. If there's another Nickelodeon show that should be a Broadway musical, which one is it? Ooh, yeah. SpongeBob is the obvious one that it should be. Um, I don't know. I I would love to see an Angry Beavers musical, maybe. Um, Okay. Or maybe Rocco's Modern Life would actually be the right answer. That would Uh, be good. uh, Yeah. Um, I, I wrote, oh, wait. For 8.30, is 8.30 the ginger one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, yep. I wrote that I would watch the end of E! True Hollywood Story, because I, I really wonder... love that show. <laughs> oh, I loved those, and it was super salacious. I wonder which one it was so this time. So good. I know. Um, oh, it's it's True Hollywood Story, the hit sitcom Growing Pains. Absolutely <gasps> would have watched that. Oh, definitely. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's a two-parter. that's got to get into like 
the religion, right? With like Camp Kirk Cameron was like oh, yeah. so religious. Sam, uh, do Julie you know McCullough. who? Kirk, do you know who Kirk Cameron is, babe? Uh no. <laughs> Have you ever I seen the religious seen. propaganda film Left Behind? <laughs> no. I have a really weird uh, Kirk Cameron story. So it was like Kirk Cameron was married and he ended up marrying his like co-star on that Chelsea show. Noble. Yes. So when I was in college, I went to college in upstate New York, but drove to Florida for spring break. Uh, I'd never been to Florida and I was in a van with some friends. And on the way down, we picked up a friend's friend. And uh, while we're on our way down, they, she, the friend was like, well, we should go to Disney. And I was like, I've never been to Disney, but we probably can't afford it. You know, my other friend was like, I've never been to Disney, but we can't afford it. She's like, well, my cousin works uh, with Disney. Let me see if they could get us in. She makes a phone call. They call us back. They're like, yeah, no problem. We got you four, five tickets to Disney World and a night in a hotel. And I was like, who's your cousin? And it was Chelsea Nobles and Kirk Cameron. They gave yeah. us a nice yeah, ABC Disney is World. a Disney pro. Well, well, good if that's nice of them. Uh, uh, so it almost funny. makes up for Kirk Cameron's crazy anti-masker stance. I don't. I. I oh God, I haven't caught up with him lately, but I. I don't think it makes up for it. I think he's a pretty cuckoo one. Oh, he's a terrible person. Uh, yeah. I've had many people from in front of and behind the camera from Growing Pains on this show. Oh, really? And, uh, oh, yeah. There's he's not a not a nice not guy. No, uh, no one liked Kurt Cameron. Um, but that would have made that each Hollywood story even it would have better. Been good, yeah, yeah, because it really affected the show. Yeah, and there was a lot of crazy behind the scenes stuff, like uh, like Jeremy Miller who played Ben. He had a stalker who tried to like kill him on like sneak into the studio a bunch of times. And Whoa. it was like a bunch of weird stuff that happened. It's it, that, that is a particularly good each Hollywood story. Wait. And then was Leo DiCaprio in that one or is that he the was, show? he yeah, played yeah. Luke Brower, yeah. a, uh, an orphan who lived in the school that Mike taught at <laughs> and Mike adopted him. Mike Seaver. Yep. Sam's Michael like, Seaver. Sam, this is the, we should do a Growing Pains episode of oh, Jack yeah. Gap yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah I'm having season, pains from a time I was not growing yet. Yes. <laughs> season two and three are great. And then uh, all the good writers quit and went to just the 10 of us because they couldn't take Kirk Cameron anymore. <laughs> <laughs> It's exactly what happened. Uh, nine o'clock. Would you guys do? I was. Uh, I went to CBS to watch some Everybody Loves Raymond. I went okay. to watch Everybody Loves Raymond as well. No. Oh yeah, like <laughs> it's it's a show like King of Queens. I never watched them when they were on, but like I'll catch it if it's just on a rerun. I'm like, oh, this is bad. This is yeah. pretty good. It's one of those things that like we we've talked about it recently because we were talking about Ray Romano as an actor because uh, I just watched another a new show that he's in. Um, and I and I like appreciate him as an actor and like I feel like yeah he got this like kind of weird what it, like reputation I feel like it was really easy to make fun of him but then I watched a couple episodes of Everybody Love Raymond and I I like laughed out loud like a couple times and I was like this is pretty good so oh, yeah I'm, well I'm I mean it. his stand-up was great um, Phil Rosenthal, who who created that show, is really funny and just like a good a good dude. Mm -hmm. um, no relation, I imagine. Um, can he get no. me to Disney World? Can you call your cousin? <laughs> um, and, uh, and and so yeah, it's just like a fun, sweet show that is like legitimately funny. It's it's not yeah. good actors. It was kind of out of place around this time because we started to get the sort of hateful shows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like the Curb Enthusiasm, like everyone's a, a like a just a selfish Monster. bad person, mm -hmm. and that's we're laughing at. And those shows really were kind of old fashioned at that yeah. time. Yeah, I yeah, that's a good point. Like Seinfeld had come and been the group that like was like these are all bad people, but it was pretty lighthearted and pretty fun. You still kind of like like them, um, but then it, you're right. Like Family Guy really starts to come out around this time. Like there's like a lot of like really cynical things and like. Yeah, like 2002 was just a really. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, is, is that the a rotary calling? phone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have red a red rotary phone. That looks I have a like red rotary phone. Yeah, you're supposed to call in a bomb with that thing. <laughs> oh, it's Jeez. a signal from my handler. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long wow. story with that thing. Yeah, sorry, uh, my phone interrupted you. That uh, was so funny. No, I, what was I talking about? Uh, you remember, like, uh, if, oh, evil people. Guy, yeah. yeah. I think, like, 2002 was just a really cynical time. I think 9 11, <laughs> I'm just going to bring it back to 9 11, had burst this bubble. And I think that people were, it was like a darker place. I was straightening my hair and dyeing it black and pink. 
And I, I do think that you're right. Yeah, there, there is more cynical choices. And everybody loves Raymond. Uh, it wasn't that. A nice little yeah. respite before the cynicism wave. Yeah, there were a bunch of comedies that were um, premiering 9-11, like that, that September in 2001. Uh, one of them was The Tick with Patrick Warburton, which is a really funny show, mm-hmm. but just like people didn't want that. Um, and so the shows that really thrived after that were stuff like 24 yeah Mm -hmm. and battlestar galactica but like curb enthusiasm just like bad people doing bad things to each other (laughs) yeah (laughs) that's what we wanted i guess i saw 24 in here somewhere Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think it had just started this year and that show is terrible yeah (laughs) it's real bad it's real bad and it's so it's so weird to me that Mary Lynn Rice Club was on it and like Janine Garofalo. Janine <laughs> Garofalo was on yeah, it? Yeah, she was she quit because she hated it, but she was on it. Yeah. Um, it was um I it was pretty racist. I will say I liked it at the time. Um I thought the concept was like I don't know, I was into it. But I also I like a lot of like I like action movies. And so I do too, yeah. but it was just like it was just like torturing people for an hour every week. Mm-hmm. It was, yeah. It was literally justifying torture to Americans. <laughs> Which yeah. is 100% ineffective. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually one of the things I have uh, Matt Nix on the show created Burn Notice. Mm-hmm. And Matt's super good dude. And the, the guy he had as his um, like technical advisor on Burn Notice is an ex CIA guy. And he was like, you, you don't do torture. It is 100% ineffective because. They just tell you whatever you want to hear, so you'll yeah. stop. And it's just, right. it's not effective. And so they never do torture on Burn Notice, but Matt would get so mad with shows like Alias, which is torture actually a lot on that show. Mm-hmm. Um, and 24 and stuff, he's like, they, they don't do that. <laughs> it's yeah. like really not effective. Interesting. But yeah, all these shows, because uh, it's more, I think, about like us wanting, or us, meaning us as a society, right. wanting to see people get like, get theirs you know yeah right Definitely. i really am curious to see if you saw what i saw for 9 30 p.m on monday sam i feel like you missed it i i might have what you're thinking later on in my schedule because uh <laughs> a, a couple of these shows are airing 24 7 apparently <laughs> that's yeah. true um and one the what i have for 9 30 is uh whose line is it anyway oh it's funny like i so i i as a, I'm a professional improviser and I don't watch that show. Like I, I, I just liked why. it a lot as a kid. I remember it. Yeah. I haven't seen it since. So. I picked um, America's Funniest Home Videos. Yeah, which like can like we in the in the midst of quarantine when things were really dark this past year, Sam and I discovered America's Funniest Home Videos. It's great. It's on so funny. Hulu or wherever, and it really saved the day. Like it's so funny. <laughs> There, yeah. Anytime they do stuff with birds, like oh. I laugh so hard. Yeah. So good. Uh, Bergeron episodes? Unfortunately, yes. yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So this was this was the first year Bergeron took over. Um, he's a local guy. He's from Haverhill, Mass. Oh. And he was hosting the the New England Emmy Awards. So the local Emmys. And Vin DeBana, who created America's Funny Home Videos, is also from Boston and happened to be watching the local Emmys and was like, this guy's great. He's the new host of America's Funny no. Home Videos. Yeah. Um, and he'd just been a local like radio and TV guy for years. So he mm. replaced Daisy Fuentes and John Fugelhorn or whatever that guy's name. Um, On AFV? Before, yeah, after yeah. Um, Saget. Face? Saget. Yeah, oh, after Saget. So, um, but that show's so fun. One of my favorite so ones is there's a guy driving and he's got like a, a bug on his back. Have you seen this one? No. <laughs> they're Maybe. like, they're, I don't know where they are. It's like they're in some tropical place and he's got like a big, huge like stick bug on his back. <laughs> and this friend is filming him and he goes, dude, there's a bug on your back. He goes, Steve, no way, Steve. No way, Steve. And he just starts he's screaming, no way, Steve. And then like gets out of the car and he's like rolling around. But the whole time he's yelling, no way, Steve. And for some reason, it's just so funny. Oh, my God. Yeah, I so love it. good. Yeah, I know. It's, it's always funny. It's always funny. Um, there's the return of spy TV, which you both passed up, which is a hidden camera show that nobody loves. Uh, (laughs) and this is a second season of hidden camera pranks begins with temps trying to cover up their bosses in office tryst with Fabio. Ooh, I feel like hidden camera shows also like had a time and 
Time has come and gone, right? This was a big resurgence because punk was huge. Yeah, yeah jackass. So, yeah, so they this really started that like sort of again more mean spirited resurgence. Right. Uh, this was also the year that Fabio killed a bird with his face. If you remember uh, that, <laughs> no. Do you remember that? I kind he of was... remember this story, but how did he kill a bird with his face? <laughs> he was on a roller coaster and a bird flew into his face. <laughs> <laughs> and so they were paparazzi filmed it and then he's getting all this Fabio just got blood all over his face. Oh, it's one of the funniest things that ever happened. Oh my god. I like for some reason I do remember that photo, but yeah. I don't think I remember oh, the so story. Good. Yeah. That's crazy. The bird committed suicide on Fabio's face. Wow. <laughs> yeah, Not a bad was, place. No, it's true. Uh, what a beautiful spot to pick. Um, and uh, it was the same year that Paula Dean got hit in the head with that frozen turkey. Uh, <laughs> well, strangely, was, it also flew into her yeah. on a Ferris wheel. There was a lot of bird. There was a lot of bird related injuries in the early 2000s <laughs> for celebrities. Uh, Tuesday, what'd you do? Let's see here. Tuesday from eight to nine, I watched Buffy the Vampire Slayer. This is season four, I think. This is the final season before it got weird and switched networks. Oh, maybe. Yeah, I've watched all of Buffy at one point. I'm not a big Buffy fan, but I did watch all of it. And I, yeah, I, I was just thinking that that was one of the better options at the time. Um, yeah. Season four is great. Yeah, again, I, I may have messed up here, but I, because I put um, that 70s show, which appeared in that one grid and maybe not this one. Yeah. Uh, that 70s show is on Buffy was a thing that I missed like it was I watched I the first yeah like people younger than us I think really latched onto it but something about it I, I tried to watch it and I was just like eh. and, and I guess I bailed when it like just when everyone says it got good um, <laughs> but like the episode where John Ritter was a robot I was like mm, <laughs> not for me I did see um, John Ritter yeah. in some ads in this TV guide, actually. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's right before he died, I think. Yeah, uh, he was on that Eight Simple Rules show they're mm -hmm. trying to push. Yeah. Eight Simple Rules for Dating My Teenage Daughter mm -hmm. <laughs> with Kelly Cacao. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so, but not a bad choice, Buffy. And yeah. what did you do, Rachel? Um, you did that 70s show. show. Mm -hmm. That's another show that uh, I feel like almost everyone on that show is a bad person. Yeah. Um, but I, I, it's a pretty funny show. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I know. I, and, yeah, I know. I, I feel like I have mixed thoughts on it, too. I do think, yeah, I've heard terrible things about um, Danny. Danny. Yeah, yeah he was, he's yeah. a rapist. Yeah. 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 So maybe I wouldn't watch and, it. <laughs> and Wilmer Valmorano also really had some kind of thing. Go, I don't I don't. People can Google it. I know it's bad. There's no way we chose the same thing for 830 because mine is so weird rachel choice but what did you choose babe? i'm still watching buffy that's the oh, okay. Okay. buffy up. okay i started watching dick tracy the movie 1990s blockbuster i have a weird like thing sam knows this i love the soundtrack from that movie the madonna soundtrack madonna one breathless and in fact uh do you know dave sawyer yes dave sawyer and i created a whole show together <laughs> based on one of the songs from that. Which song? Uh, Let's dance, you can okay. do a little two-step. We did a, a whole show at Improv Boston way back when based on that song. Um, and uh, hey, I love it. Were you it. born, Sam, when Dick Tracy came out? 1990? No, actually. No. <laughs> So, have you ever seen it? No. So, so basically what happened was, 1989, Batman was massive. So they had the Batman movie, and they are like, what comic book can right. we make for the next summer that's going to be a huge hit? So they decided Dick Tracy, the mm. 1930s newspaper strip, mm -hmm. and Warren Beatty wrote and directed and starred in it. Mm -hmm. And it's all, like, very candy-colored and weird. It was a massive failure just massive and my favorite thing is there's a character in it called the blank who just has no face because all the villains are like mm. hideously deformed you know mm. it's like prune face and flat top and little head and whatever um but one of them's called the blank and then the, the 
this is a spoiler, everybody. Madonna's character turns out to be the blank. Like she's actually evil. Bum, bum, bum. It, it's a big reveal in the movie. But when the toys came out, you could get the blank toy. And when you took the head off, it was Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> and the toys came out like six months before the movie. Oh, so everybody really knew. Funny. And it was a big, oh, it was a big problem. So funny. I will say I was choosing, if I wasn't watching Dick Tracy, I would be watching Shrek because Shrek is also on at that time. There's a lot yes. of showings of Shrek. But yeah throughout this week shrek was the big summer hit the year before um and so hbo had just gotten it yeah so it's it's just rinse and shrek uh, shrek all time very important movie for sam growing up for sure um and i was actually just reading an article about like why shrek has aged so well and it's true um shrek is a great kids movie that still holds up today because they do turn the fairy tale trope on its head Mm -hmm. and so then it's like it's prepared to live on for a lot longer than if you had just regurgitated the same story trope so i noticed i'd never seen the sequels but that that movie also doesn't have a lot of those like awful this joke's for the parents too right like (laughs) sometimes like like, then the elf goes (laughs) you go girl (laughs) <laughs> yeah. you know? and, then, and then he goes uh he goes not you know like, like it's just it's really for the kids don't get it, it there's not a lot of that in that movie but well, i found the, that yeah well because john Ken, i could i could listen to you list examples of <laughs> jokes and get more examples more examples <laughs> Well, and, has- then, and then, right, there's like this donkey, and the donkey goes, what's up? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> well, that is, like, that movie does have donkey, and it, and donkey is Eddie funny, Murphy. And it's Eddie Murphy, yeah. and it's funny for everybody. Yeah. You know? In the morning, I'm making waffles. That's that's ageless. Same with um in uh, in Frozen, the... the Snowman. Snowman. Snowmans. Snowmans. The Snowmans. <laughs> They're my oh, neighbors. Oh, look, I went to the Snowmans for pizza. <laughs> <laughs> you know the Snowmans. They're getting divorced. Uh. Um, I knew it. Uh, yeah, I, I haven't seen that movie since I saw it in theaters, but um, very long story. That summer, I had just moved to Somerville. I lived in a really awful apartment, and it was super hot because I was on the third floor of a triple decker and this kid who liked my old band worked at the movie theater near my house in Somerville. And he was like, Hey, meet me around the back one day. (laughs) And he gives me a whole case of those, like, we're sorry, free movie passes. So I used to go and sleep in the movie theater because it was air conditioned. (laughs) And so I saw Shrek like 200 times. Oh Oh my gosh. Yeah. Shrek original Kings of comedy. There's another one too. Man, that, the, 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 yeah, that Smash Mouth song has got to be burned in your brain at this. Oh point. yeah, if you play that song, I fall asleep immediately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it has that effect on no one. Yeah, else. yeah, just, just me. the soothing just tones me. of somebody yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wants to. Uh, yeah, out immediately. It's like a hypnotic suggestion. Um, <laughs> so that's all of Tuesday. I think you guys are doing movies. Yeah, movie yeah. night. Passed up the shield. Uh, <laughs> Wednesday, what are you doing? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, Ken. I'm waking up at 4.55 a.m. to watch the U.S. men's national soccer team take on Portugal in the World Cup. Mm-hmm. Uh, Portugal. <laughs> yeah. I remember them winning that year, and I lived in Somerville, and the local Portuguese contingent was real happy mm-hmm. for <laughs> weeks with their, with their car horns. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was quite the upset. The U.S. did beat Portugal and keep them from advancing and it was an important soccer game. So if I was aware, I, I didn't even like soccer uh, in 2002, but um, if I if I did, uh, that's that's what I would have been watching it. Do you like it now? Five. Yes, big soccer fan. Big now. soccer family. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you have like a family team? Yeah. Well, we uh, well. Oh, I was yeah, going to show but... you, and now I realize we're on a podcast. Um, yeah, we have a big Timbers flag. The Portland Timbers are the team around here. And uh, they're not timber wolves. They're just literally wood. The, yep, the process Portland, of trees falling. Wait, Ken, you'll love this because because the Portland Timbers uh, and, and the, they're huge here. Uh, it's like a, a it's soccer town, USA in Portland, soccer Oregon, City, USA, soccer city. Sorry. Uh, when on the side of the field, there's a 
Timberman. And he's got a His huge... His name is Timber Joey. Timber Joey. And he has a huge log and a... Chainsaw. Chainsaw. <laughs> and any time the Portland Timbers score a goal, he... <laughs> he slices a bit of the log. And, and it's very cool. And they pass so, the log through the crowd. And then they give that log slice to the player that scored the goal after the game. Mm-hmm. To eat it? <laughs> yeah. They do call them wood cookies. Wood cookies. Yeah. No, they just get hung up. They're very yeah, cool. Yeah, I... When I the last time I did the Bridgetown Festival, there was a mm-hmm. venue called the uh, what was it? It was some tree name, the Pine something maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't I know. can't remember. <laughs> it was like a tree themed venue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot of wood, a lot of wood related stuff here <laughs> in uh, Oregon. I'll often yeah. say that trees are my favorite animal. <laughs> It's true. Uh, and strip clubs. A lot of trees and strip right. clubs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you know, the the common denominator there. Um, so if I'm actually saying what I'm watching <laughs> at 8 p.m. on Wednesday, that is, uh, I'm turning to Animal Planet to watch the Crocodile Hunter Diaries. <gasps> oh, poor Ooh. Steve Irwin. Yeah. Uh, this is when he was still with us. Yes. Um, and before he was killed by a, a, a manta ray. Yeah. I put I couldn't decide but I I think I'll watch Airplane but I also wrote that I would probably watch West Wing as well. So you're a big movie person. I guess television. so. Well, it's funny cuz I I feel like I've watched so much TV and then lately like Sam doesn't Sam is much more TV than movies mm-hmm. except you like documentaries. Mm-hmm. So like I watch movies by myself these days cuz he's not into them. So I'm like whenever I can watch a movie I'm like, "Oh, I better watch it cuz that's when I can. <laughs> you just hate movies. It's just they're pretty long. <laughs> so you have a short attention TV. span. Uh, no, I'll watch TV for longer than a movie. Yeah. So, you'll, so you'll binge like 12 episodes of a show. Right. Yes. But be like, I don't want to spend 90 minutes watching that movie. Yes, you're yes. making my exact point, <laughs> yes. Ken. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think it's because you probably don't want to commit. And at any point in that binge, you can bail out. Exactly. And you're not going right. to miss anything. Right. right. But I yeah. get it. I can see both sides here. But I also do like West Wing, and I would watch West Wing as well. I've never seen West Wing. It's good. Never seen it. Uh, it just It's one of those shows that was a huge thing, along with Desperate Housewives, which was also big at this time, that I just never saw. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, totally passed me by. Have you seen Airplane, Sam? Yes. Yeah, I have okay. watched Airplane. All right, so you did make him watch Airplane. <laughs> <laughs> you watched that one before my time. Yeah, I, any of the like classic comedy movies, yeah. I made sure to watch, I think. Okay, yeah. Airplane is really funny. <laughs> yeah. I that, just didn't get movie. around to Dick Tracy or Wall Street. No, but you know what Sam hadn't seen that I made him watch recently was, um, oh my God, the other movie with the same people. Naked Gun? Uh, Naked Gun. Yeah. And it is so funny like i oh, loved yeah. it as a kid yeah. and then i was like I, I hope it holds up like i don't know and we both like laughed out loud yeah, numerous times funny. have you gone back and watched the tv series no so naked, naked gun? gun was was originally a tv series called police squad and it was oh. 1982 it was only about eight episodes it was a summer series and it's the tv series is even funnier than the movie oh, wow. uh, so that's why the first movie is naked gun for the files of police squad um, oh. but the the stuff they did in the tv show i cannot believe they got away with like there's just some bizarre some some of it they reused in the movies like mm-hmm. some of the gags but they're still really funny so much um, physical gags like oh yeah just so funny yeah I always love the one where it's it's close up shots of them shooting at each other, and then the long shot they're on the same they're on different sides of a park bench. <laughs> <laughs> they're like like a like a foot away from each other. <laughs> I like there's this one scene in in Naked Gun where like they're like come in here and one guy goes around the flat and the other guy goes through a door. <laughs> yes, yeah, <laughs> it's just like so pointless. Yeah, <laughs> Leslie Nielsen got really unfunny once people told him he was in comedies because he's funny when he's not being funny. Like, that's what's funny about Police Squad. Mm-hmm. And then when they started putting him in, like, like Dracula Dead and Love, and he's all like, hey, I'm funny, farts, wah! It's like, no, no, mm-hmm. it's not funny. Yeah. It's not funny. Uh, yeah, so those are good picks. And then that's what you're doing. Eight career Opportunities is on TV 50, which is a 1991 John Hughes movie, one of my favorites, starring mm-hmm. Frank Whaley, Jennifer Connelly. Uh, love that movie. I definitely would have watched that. Hmm, interesting. I'm just saying that the Stanley Cup Championship is on. 
Hockey? Are you a hockey guy? I'm not a big hockey guy, but that's the championship. That'd be fun to watch. Would it, though? <laughs> <laughs> I always feel like hockey has the right amount of scoring. Basketball, they score too much. Every basket doesn't matter. Yeah. Soccer, yeah. I, people often are upset that the score, they don't even have to score in the game. Connect. Yeah. Um, but I feel like hockey, it's like between like five and eight points. You know, that, that feels right for a sport. <laughs> that makes sense. I guess. Um, <laughs> Ken, why not, do you hate hockey? Because <laughs> I, uh, I grew up here and then you get the Bruins and, you know, uh-huh. it's the whole thing. Okay. Uh, the only hockey I like is the one scene in the Friends of Eddie Coyle where they go to a Bruins game. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so anything else on Wednesday? Do we get to nine o'clock? You're watching a movie the whole night. I Well, at 10 p.m. I'm watching another movie, uh, so don't yell at me, but... I'm watching the never ending story oh. and it's really important. Turn around. <laughs> uh, Sam and I actually, one of our episodes this season of our podcast, we compare uh, Lord of the, not compare, but Lord of the Rings and never ending story. Um, so I had to. Yeah. We just I've never it. seen, never seen Lord of the Rings. Uh, have seen never ending story many, many times. Oh my. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, I think, I, what a depressing to our episode. movie! <laughs> you talk about how it's just like the most depressing thing ever made. Yeah, well, Sam I, goes on and on about that horse dying. Oh man, that is oh yeah, so uncool. Like, Imagine seeing uncool. that when you're five. I know. I, it is brutal for an adult to watch. Like just the way they're, it just keeps drowning. <laughs> like it's not like and we lost him and like we have to move on. It's like no, let's take the time and watch it drown. It's really upsetting. Yeah. Oh, he's yes. gonna say, "Oh my, oh no!" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The nothing. The yeah. That movie's brutal. Brutal. Oh, but then you get to fly on a dog, which is cool. <laughs> yeah, who looks just like my dog. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, very much. Very Falcor looking dog. <laughs> um. Yeah. So uh, that's fair. Um, and you're watching hockey and Rachel wants you to watch Never Ending Story. <laughs> I'm like, babe, let's watch the movie. A trail. Call my name. <laughs> um, who that? Do you ever know anyone named Bastion? Oh, I hate that name. What the hell is that? I guess it's Sebastian. <laughs> yeah, but I that's like. Sabo was the short person. <laughs> Seb? Yeah. That's like those dickheads named Christopher go by Toph. Oh, mm, don't get me started. Oh, it's, it's wrong. It's wrong. <laughs> but speaking of, can you guys call me Chull from now on? Yeah, what up, so Chull? Chull? I was talking to Chull and mm. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> well, that's like, a, is your full name Samuel? Yeah. So, like, you don't want to go by Yule. No. <laughs> <laughs> like Yule Brenner. <laughs> hey man, have a cool Yule. <laughs> oh my god. Uh yeah. So Thursday what'd we do? All right. Babe. Yeah. Oh, this We're- looks this looks tough. You guys have a problem with this one? Well, if it's 8 p.m. and it's Thursday, I assume we're watching Survivor, right? What? Survivor. Survivor was on? Well, <laughs> Oh, I, I made was, a huge well, mistake. Well, maybe it's that whole grid thing again. Is Survivor on? Uh, I don't see it. What the hell is up with that primetime grid thing? Oh, thank goodness. Oh, look at the grid. Uh, where did you see Survivor? I don't even see it in the grid. I yeah, I didn't see it in the grid. grid. It said Survivor Thailand. Oh. But uh, I guess not. It's And then I... Well, basically... Uh, Sam and I discovered Survivor like two years ago, but we like went back and watched like a bunch and it's so fun and we love it. Yeah. Oh, really? Um, but Huge Survivor. Oh, yeah. So good. And notoriously, I don't think we, Thailand's supposed to be one of the worst seasons. So I think that's really funny. Um, I only, I watched the first season and I was like, I get why this is entertaining. That's one Richard Hatch won. Mm-hmm. And that girl, what was the cute girl's name? Colleen? Yes. Instead, she Who, became like the Blistex person or chapstick. Yes, and she had bug infections in her legs, and then she was in a, a, a Rob Schneider movie, which is worse. Well, uh, <laughs> well I got to say, like, 
it got the show actually like evolved and I think got better because we've watched like old seasons and in the old seasons they're really about it being a show about surviving and it's like yeah we're gonna let your you're gonna have to amputate your leg (laughs) sorry like and in the later seasons it's not like that it's more like oh is something really medically wrong what we're gonna step in and make sure that you're okay and instead it's more about that's better it is because it's more about like the gameplay like they they do all these challenges and they're really fun and they're just like hit it's like it's like if a board game were a tv show i think a lot of like uh things uh, about survivor yeah it's not about surviving it's it's just a reality show and instead of getting the contestants drunk they just don't let them eat for three days so (laughs) yeah same same, effect yeah same like social problems are just gonna arise because we're not normal Mm -hmm. and we can't be nice to each other so yeah i guess that makes sense because now that i remember like a lot of the first season and i'm not being facetious here was about diarrhea yeah (laughs) Yeah, they it really stopped, was. They really stopped doing. They didn't. They don't show that stuff anymore. I was gonna say they don't show that shit anymore. Well, <laughs> anyway, I guess I can't watch Survivor at eight p.m. So I'll watch Friends. Neither of you pick the Essence Awards hosted by Steve Harvey. No, mm. I went. I went for Shrek. This is the night oh. I'm finally watching oh. Shrek eight to nine thirty, okay. and then capping it off with a nine thirty showing of the Powerpuff Girls. Oh, oh nice! A great yeah. show. Yeah, a really it's a great, really show. fun cartoon. Um, I <laughs> Survivor note when I, I worked at WBZ at this time and for season two, they did tryouts of Survivor at the station and they built an obstacle course in the parking lot. And that's the I signed in Elizabeth Hasselbeck. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You got it. cast there. That's yeah. I take the blame. <laughs> um, Powerpuff Girls is still great. Like that. That's one of those original sort of uh, yeah. cartoon, cartoon, cartoon network shows that. Uh, totally holds up and is just really, really entertaining. Uh, and then at nine, did you guys do the big award show? <laughs> I did Will and Grace. What did you do? Uh, mine is the second half of Shrek and Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> that's right. Oh, that's right. So neither of you went with the 2002 Movie Awards. Ooh. Oh, MTV movie, movie Awards. Awards. Oh, the MTV. <gasps> yep. Hosted by Jack Black and Sarah Michelle Gellar. Uh, scheduled to appear... Kate Beckinsale, Nicolas Cage, Jennifer Connelly, Matt Damon, Eminem, Anthony Hopkins, Johnny Knoxville, Bernie Mac, Mike Myers, Freddie Prince Jr., Chris Rock, Will Smith, and more. Ooh. Ooh. I love and more. Uh, that sounds, I would watch that too. Yeah. VMAs? No. The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, leads the pack with six nominations, including one for Best Movie. Other contenders for that honor are Black Hawk Down, <laughs> The Fast and the Furious, Legally Blonde, and Shrek. Honestly, it's Shrek or Lord of the Rings. Fast and the Furious got nominated for awards? I guess. I've never seen those uh, huh. either. Actually, yeah. of of those movies that are nominated, all I've seen is Shrek. Really? <laughs> yes. Legally Blonde is is such a classic, like fun comedy, and yeah, it's good. Lord of the Rings is obviously it's Lord of the Rings. I mean, and and Legally Blonde, good Broadway show. Yeah. Well, I Was only it? saw I it know. in the West End. I, I hear great okay. things. I I'm act, I, I, I got to watch that musical We're, because I, I, when we watched the movie, I was like, oh, this does lend itself to a musical. That's very easily. true. I generally I, I don't I don't like when they take modern like movies for whatever reason and just make them into. Sam is in a musical theater company and they are amazing and they create all original music, all original stories, everything's original. And now I feel like it's just like Pretty Woman, the musical, Legally Blonde, the musical, King Kong. But, Rocky. So I didn't um, see it. Yeah. Here's a weird thing. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen any of the old Elvis movies, like yeah. Las Vegas. They've never done an Elvis musical, like a jukebox musical with all like those crazy, like it's basically like makes itself. Right. Right. I mean, I'm surprised that there's someone, uh, you know, with no creativity and a lot of money that would, wouldn't green light that. Yeah. It, like it, did just nobody pitch it. Right. Yeah. For real. But uh, what would that be? called blue suede shoes mm. clam bake yeah. <laughs> <laughs> clam bake the best worst elvis movie uh no no uh change of habit is the best worst elvis movie have you ever seen change of habit Mm-mm. Mm. stars mary tyler moore whoa uh as an undercover nun nun yeah I, yep. i've either heard of this or maybe i caught some of it yeah oh it's amazing elvis <laughs> is a inner city doctor who cures autistic children via tickling 
No. No. <laughs> there That's is, incorrect, uh, Ken. You said uh, tickling. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Uh, Elvis does kung fu on some pimps. Mm. Uh, it's just, yeah. It's Sounds like it's fun want. for the whole family. Yeah. Every, it's something for everybody. Uh, in that song that they used in Ocean's Eleven, Little Less Conversation <laughs> is from that movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, originally. So, final night of the week, Friday night, mm-hmm. big night. Will you guys like rent a movie, get a pizza night Friday, kids, or like watch TV? I think we watch a lot of TV. We did go to a video store a lot, and as the youngest in my family, it was always my job to put the VHS into the VCR. Oh, that's <laughs> um, a, that's a lot of pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were definitely like more of a television family than we were. Yeah, I feel like we were a movie family. Um, what did we do? Well, we it was we would have dinner, uh, but we wouldn't get a pizza because it was Shabbat. Um, oh. No, I'm just kidding. We are not religious, but we would. <laughs> we would, though, sometimes like have Shabbat dinner, I guess. But then I don't know. I feel like I would. What did we watch? What did we do? TGIF when you were a kid. Oh, imagine. TGIF. Yes, of course. Thank you. That's what Sam's, I watched. You missed out on TGIF. It was done by the time you were of oh, age. Yeah. Yes, TGIF was awesome. For it sure. Needs to come back. That's why. That's why we have this gang violence. <laughs> yeah, that's why. <laughs> Um, so what do we do on this Friday? Sam? It's a, um, it's a thin night. Yeah, I, I hit up SpongeBob SquarePants again. At okay. Because I couldn't couldn't get anything. You didn't watch America's Funniest Home Videos? Uh, from 8.30 to 9, I watched America's Funniest Home <laughs> Videos. Did you? Here's the description, which I always love because it's completely unnecessary to describe the episode of America's Funniest yes. Home Videos because yeah. nobody's watching it based on this. <laughs> like, if you're going to watch it, you're going to watch it, you're not going to go, oh, what's on it tonight? Right. And yeah. this one is... Uh, Are there a any bugs? Wo- <laughs> yeah. A woman forgets to remove the gas nozzle from her car. A grandfather <laughs> is scared by a boy's gift. And a woman gets too close to crocodiles. Oh, <laughs> I'd watch it. Yeah, that sounds good. I love I'm it. In. That show I'm is in. so funny. And then um, um, from 9 to 10, I'm watching Encounters with the Unexplained. That is a good call. <laughs> Yeah, I actually saw that Forensic Files was on there, and I was like, that's an interesting one. I, I had Forensic Files on Tuesday night. Uh, it's on every Tuesday. night on whatever yeah. channel that is. <laughs> I think Court I put TV. down um, Sex in the City for 9 and 9.30. Why not? Mm-hmm. Gotta. And then at 10, a little... I mean, I can't believe we haven't mentioned Law & Order SVU yet. <laughs> Again, I've never seen it. Whoa, really? What about regular yeah. Law & Order? No. <laughs> Ken, that's so and interesting as a TV I don't, aficionado. I know, and I don't think I've seen a whole episode of Sex and the City either. Oh, that's not for you. I remember my dad, my dad went to, went to see the movie, <laughs> and he was like, no, the show's pretty good, like, there's boobs in it. Oh my God. <laughs> that was how he tried to sell it to me, uh, yeah. and I was like, perfect. Except na- this is, again, where I, I put the wrong thing down. So I don't think Law & Order's on, so I'll watch Alias, a rerun probably. Yeah, because we're in summertime here. Um, there's a special on called The Best Commercials You've Never Seen and Some You Have. And this is a roundup of racy and ridiculous ads from around the world, including an effects-laden car commercial from Britain and a spot by future film director Tim Burton. Ooh, mm. I, I do think that would be a fun show to watch. I, I saw that like those. The Wire is on at 10, but I'm like... I feel like at this time of my, I, I'm not watching The Wire 10 p.m. on a Friday. I, like that's when I'm watching something more like just like easy breezy. Mm. You yeah, know? that's depressing. That is yeah. very depressing. It's dark. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I I still haven't watched The Wire because I feel like it'll just bum me out. Same with Breaking Bad. I'm just like, yeah, no, I feel bad all the time anyway. Uh, <laughs> I don't really need. I'm sure they're well done. Oh, but uh, yeah, The Wire is incredible. I uh, I just I just don't need that kind of hassle, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put on Sunday, Monday, happy mm-hmm. days. Yep. Yeah. Well, Predator Two is on the better Predator. Ooh. That's on at ten o'clock. That is the better one. <laughs> well, well, there's like eight Predator movies now. I've only seen the first two. Yeah. That's funny, by the way. I see that Pelican Brief is on TV, which I was really stoned the other night. Oh. Oh, hold on. Hold on. The past is gone. We got a caller. <laughs> <laughs> is that your landline? First of all. Yeah. You have a landline. That's crazy. I do have a landline. So here's the thing. (laughs) We're on a show about TV guides and you have a landline. (laughs) Yeah. So when you get a cable bundle, 
<laughs> it's cheaper to get all three things, even if you don't need them. Mm-hmm. And uh, the sales guy was like, well, just get the phone and then just unplug it. That's what I do. Yeah. And I'm like, well, why don't you just price it so right. that I don't need it? But so then, so that's what I did. And then I bought this phone and it's from an old motel. Mm. And so the jack for the phone is on the other side of the room and it's behind this like bookcase that I'd have to move. And because it's a motel phone, you can't unplug it. <laughs> oh, that's really You'd have funny. to unplug it at the wall and I'd have to move a bunch of stuff. So I, that's where, that's where I'm at. But basically. why'd you plug it in, in the first place? Mm. Oh, I used to use it mm. when as I moved a, in. As a phone? Yeah. And it's a rotary phone. And How it's got... do you like text on that? You don't. Oh. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would use that. To, I don't know if um, that's a phone. <laughs> I would use that like if it, I had to call the fire department once, and I used it. I feel like that phone. Yeah, looks like it direct dials the fire department for it's sure. It's very much like Batman's Batman sixty six phone, which is why I initially bought it. <laughs> if we're being totally honest, here. I feel like I I feel like it's very on brand for you to have a red rotary. Thank phone. you. Yeah, yeah. I used to have. It doesn't work with my current cell phone, but I had a red phone receiver that was a hands free, like it. It was right. just a phone receiver you plugged in to your That's cool. cell phone. <laughs> um, and I would be on it like in the car, which <laughs> always look weird. <laughs> um, I do want to mention Dark Angel is on. Do you remember that show? Dark Angel. Dark Angel. I don't think so. It w- so this was, they really pushed it this year, 2001, 2002. It was a, like a future set dystopian sci-fi show starred Jessica Alba. It was oh. kind of the thing that made her. And it was produced and created by James Cameron. Hmm. And Jessica Alba played this like hybrid orphan superhero who had like cat DNA. <laughs> oh my God. So, but like you found that out later. She had like super cat powers. <laughs> Crazy. Like, yeah. Uh, it did not. It was, it was greenlit in the wake of the success of Buffy, right. but uh, it just didn't. That's crazy. Cause there's yeah. a Buffy spinoff called Angel. Yes, and this is like, <laughs> screw you and your angel. This is Dark Angel. <laughs> oh, I did this just is... see that I Love Lucy is also on, and I think I missed that. I do love I yeah, Love I Lucy. Yeah, I had I Love Lucy on Tuesday night, mm. right before Forensic Files. <laughs> you both also Friday night passed up the Comedy Central special Comics Come Home 4, filmed right here in Boston, uh, featuring Caroline Ray, who's Canadian, not from Boston. Uh, Mario Cantone, who grew up less than one mile from where I sit right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, and a bunch of other comics probably from Boston that I wouldn't have watched. But that is on. <laughs> <I love laughs> and that. probably some hockey players, too, because usually Bobby Orr <laughs> shows up. or I see He's a hockey player, I think. Uh, <laughs> that is, yeah, this is a week Friday. This is a week Friday. Yeah. Well, that's well, that's Fridays, right? Fridays, people are like in the summer, especially. Yeah. Back in those days, we used to go outside and kick a ball around. Did you have a neighborhood game you'd play? Well, not at like twenty something. <laughs> yeah. Well, as a kid, we played a lot of kickball. Um, I loved kickball. I started a kickball club, the KBC. I remember that. <laughs> With my friends. Um, yeah. What about you? I played a lot of baseball. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Stick ball? Uh, no, actually, with with bases. Actually, one time we didn't have a second base, but my friend brought his dog to the park. And so we're like, all right, the dog is just like laying in center field. We'll call that second base. <laughs> and then when we hit the ball really far, all of a sudden second base went to go chase after the ball, and it created some very interesting game states. <laughs> so what you're saying is you got to second base with a dog. <laughs> And that's our show. (laughs) Uh, We didn't call it stickball in Portland. We called it timberball. Um, Yeah, we played this weird hybrid version of of of, uh, freeze tag. What's a freeze tag? I guess it was flashlight tag, kind of mixed with kick the can. Mm. We played that in our neighborhood. That was dark. You have a yeah. You do it at night. It's the person who's it has a flashlight. And so if they, you go and hide and if they get you with the flashlight beam, you have to go in the jail, Mm -hmm. which is over by the can. And then someone can (laughs) free everybody if they come and kick the can before they get caught. Oh, Oh, that's that's great. That's fun. It's fun. That's like combining a couple different, like three different games. Yeah. So that was big in our neighborhood. And then we had to stop because we knew people moved into the neighborhood and, and some ladies flowers got trampled and oh, yeah. the police were called and it was it was ugly yeah, yeah. sounds like uh, you guys were yeah. making trouble i'm putting this whole town yeah. in my rear view you guys yep. you guys That's ever played a game called grounders 
No. Oh. Okay, so, so you dig graves. It <laughs> it's similar to like hot lava monster. Okay, you play this on like a playground where like you can't touch the bark dust or. I guess I don't know what you guys had sharp rocks. I don't know what your playground <laughs> heroin like. needles. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you uh, you have to if you go on the ground, you can go on the ground in between the structures. But if the person who's it, who is blindfolded, just trying to feel around for everybody, says grounders while you're on the ground, then you're it. That's like as good as tagging you. Huh. It's a fun what? game. All it's right. like verbal tag, so it's like it's like Marco Polo yes. meets Where's Law. Okay, yeah, it's All Marco right. Polo. It's you could tag them blind, and so you have a lot of people that are just trying to remain still and hoping that the blind person, you know, moves uh, around them. Well, fun, fun park game, guys. Yeah. Well, you know, in Chinese lore, there yeah. are these. Uh, they call them hopping vampires, and they're sort of zombies dressed as priests, and they they hop, and they're blind. And they can only see you if you're breathing. So if you hold your breath, they Whoa. can't see you. Whoa. It's a hot, hopping vampire tip. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hot tip. Hot tip, hopping <laughs> vampires. Uh, and you can stop them by putting a prayer scroll on their forehead. Hmm. Whoa. This is so a little too cool religious monster. for our taste. Pretty huh? cool monster. <laughs> uh, that is, uh, yeah. Um, anyway, that is the week. Thank you guys for doing this. What's the podcast called again? And... Uh, so yep. people can listen to it. It's called Sam and Rachel's Generation Gap. No, this podcast that they're listening to right now. I forgot my own name. Uh, <laughs> no, I was kidding. Yeah. TV <laughs> man. Yeah. Sam and Rachel's Generation Gap. So you guys have been doing it about a couple months now, right? Yeah, we recorded a lot of the episodes um, a, a, a while ago, and they've been coming out in the last couple months. And we're recording our, fi- our season finale episode here this week. Mm-hmm. And that will What's be- warranting the season finale? Like, is lockdown over where you are? <laughs> <laughs> well, we wanted we're doing a 10 episode season. I think mainly okay. because Sam is on like 20 podcasts and he needs some free time. But um but yeah, the I think like what's warranting this episode being the finale is that it's going to involve Pokémon, which is a really hot topic uh for Sam's generation and for my generation. I'm just like, "What?" Yeah, so, it's like Power Rangers, right? Yeah. It's a Power Rangers thing. We're putting it up against uh My Little Pony, but it oh. probably should have been Power Rangers. <laughs> um, Fair enough. Yeah, Ken, w- how many Pokemon can you name? One. Which one? Pikachu? Sure. That's the same as me. Sure. We're the same age. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's one. Yeah. yeah, and I have no interest in the rest. Yeah. I just don't care. <laughs> You're a Pikachu man. I know that about I'm you. I'm a Pikachu man. I like my little yellow lightning cats. Is that what it is? Lightning, Lightning mouse, cat? yeah. Yeah, it's a mouse. It's yeah. a mouse. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, well, thank you guys so much for doing this. It's been great talking to you. Great to meet you, Sam. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, uh, when the world isn't ending, we'll all see people in person again. That would Sounds be great. great. It's so good to see you. Thanks, Ken. There you go, Rachel and Sam. Uh, that was a really good time. I hope you enjoyed that. Check out the Generation Gap podcast. Uh, for those of you in the United States, if you're celebrating the Independence Day, have a good time. It'll be a strange one this year. Uh, also, it's it's weird to me. This is usually the time of year that I start to release episodes from convention season. So, you, you know, doing the Denver show. And uh, from about May till October, I would probably work one convention a month at least. And I would usually get between two and six interviews per convention. So uh, that's two years in a row without that, uh, without that pipeline. So uh, I'm missing it. I assume you are too, because I I get to talk to some really great people there, but who knows that'll hopefully come back. Uh, Anyway, I'm pushing to get some good guests uh, without conventions behind me and uh, you know, doing my best. So if you would like to email me, let me know how you're doing. You can do so at tvguidancecouncilor.gmail.com. I also want to thank, Patrons, thank you so much. Um, I haven't been doing stand-up, obviously, for a year. Haven't been doing conventions. Um, I'm probably down ten grand a year, I would say, uh, from not being able to do those things. And so every dollar that you guys give to that Patreon uh, is an enormous help. And there's a bunch of new patrons. Uh, and I, like I said, I cannot thank you enough. 
patreon.com backless tv guidance counselor uh you guys are great and you know what it's totally fine if you're not on there too you're great as well and i thank you for listening um but i just wanted to 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 mention that because there was a bunch of new people and i really do appreciate it uh anyway we'll be here next week so we'll see you then for a brand new edition of tv guidance counselor when people say hey i need some crystal that was never crystal light he slices a bit of the log and it's very cool